cum laude from Gettysburg College with a BA in philosophy and a minor in Latin and political science in 1994. She was employed for several banks and brokers in Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, and New York as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She changed careers from banking to pursue a security trading career in 2008. A self-taught day trader with over four years experience, Melissa's specialty is trading strategy that focuses on shorting stocks that gap. So without further ado, I'm going to give Melissa control. Unmuted. Unmuted. Okay, Melissa, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Welcome. I can. You're ready to go. Great. Can you see my blue PowerPoint slide here as well? Let's see. Can people see Melissa's screen? Does it look good before I, I start? There it is. I see it. Wonderful. Welcome. Thank you so much, Amy, and thank you, Traders Exclusive, for having me here today. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today I'm going to talk about how to trade on the side of power money. So if you're interested in more information, uh, you can go to my website after the lecture at www.thestockswish.com. And you can also feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswish.com as well if you'd like more information. And I have a lot of videos on YouTube, videos of trades I've done and other webinars, so you can feel free to go there and watch things as well. So let's get right into it. I know we're a couple of minutes behind here, but you know, I just want everyone to feel comfortable. Re ask me questions and Amy will put them up there and let's talk about what we're here to focus on today. What makes stocks move? Money. Money is what makes stocks move. Money coming in, money coming out, that's what makes them move. That is the thrux and the crust of the market. So who controls the market? Well, power. Power money, the big, big, big boys, they're the ones that control the market, people with lots of money. And I call this power money. And it's power money in the market. Power money in the market is created by institutions who set the tone for stocks move on the day. If you become a specialist in defining what institutions are buying or selling, then you will have a huge advantage in your trading. Power money sets the trend and makes the trend and changes the trend in charts. If you are not trading on this side of the institutions in the market, you will have a hard time seeing lasting and I mean lasting and consistent success in your trading. You have to learn how to read and trade on the side of institutional money. And, you know, it's one of these things where once you figure out how to do this, you'll probably never trade any other way again because this is such a powerful, powerful, powerful way to trade. And this lecture has a powerful message. And what is that? That learning how to read the footprints of institutional money will turn you into a great trader. You know, everyone always wonders, you know, what? What is it going to take? What do I have to do? It's really actually quite simple once you know what to look for. Why? Because you just ride the coattails of this power money. Not, not one of us. If there was 2,000 people here today, and, and I called a trade, and we all did it together, we wouldn't move a stock a boo. It's power money that moves a stock. And I mean just huge, 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 huge amounts of money. And they're the ones that make the moves. And as little people, as traders, as individuals, even, even sizable traders in the market, we can make money and quite a lot of money if we just trade with this. So this is really where it's at. So why is it so important to do this? Why is reading this so important? It is important to read the flow of institutional money in the market. So you can make money from their moves. Simple. When you trade with this power, you are following the trail of the money flow. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market and stocks. It also creates long-lasting momentum and sets trends to trade for bigger time frames. When you are looking for institutional money, you are really reading the side of the power in a stock. And you want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. And actually, if you are not on the side of this, you will probably lose. It's one of these things where you really have to get it right. Institutional money is in charge, in charge, in the market and stocks at all times. And this is the thing. If you think that it's not, it might seem that it's not, but then it comes in and then you see it and then it's there. 
it's one of these things which where again it's, it seems almost astounding and amazing i'm going to show you some charts from today but it's real and even if it seems like it's not there it is you just have to know what to look for Here's an example of ARIA. This is a trade today that I did. ARIA closed, this is a gap, and it closed last night here um, right above 17-ish and gapped down this morning under $6, open at $5.90. Had a beautiful short in this morning, came down and ran down to $4. This stock had almost a $2 move in the morning to the downside. It was a short. I shorted this this morning. So this was the power of institutions selling out of this. And if you thought this is going to fill the gap or be a buy or something like that, it would have been the wrong direction to play this this morning. In fact, this fell off a cliff and fell off a cliff fast and hard and heavy. So here's a great example and a live one from today of institutional money wanting out of this thing and out of this thing quite badly. So how can you read the side of institutions in the market? Well, this is what I do. I do it by reading gaps. Gaps are a secret ingredient in charts that many people overlook, and yet they hold a lot of significance. Gaps make the trend and set the trend and continue the trend in stocks and the market. In fact, gaps are very significant in the market. They set the trend because they are definitive and demonstrative change and show a price in what is called an event. Okay, it's an event. And that's really what a strategy is. I talk to people and I say, what is your strategy? And they tell me something that they do. Well, this bar does this bar and this moving average goes here and do, 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 do. That's not a strategy. That, that is a play. You need a strategy. A strategy is an event. It's the bulk. It's the weight. It's the weightiness behind. It's the reason why. Why are you doing this trade? Why are you doing this play? Why do you want to get an ARIA in the first place? Well, I wanted to get an ARIA today to short to the downside because it was a gap, an event, something that happened, happened in the chart that pushed the price all the way down and it was made by institutional money. Gaps are a real show of the power of money. Gaps either continue the trend or in fact, change the trend. And if you follow the gap, you'll be following the power of money. And this is really what's so exciting about learning gaps because they tell you what is going on with who's in control of the stock. Because institutional money is the one that makes the gaps. There's one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock and it's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money or what I call power of money. Power money is in charge, and it's in charge at all times. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction, and trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there is a lot of in the market. There, there's actually quite a lot of them. You don't see them. You don't talk to them. You might read or hear about them. You don't know their names, but they're real. They're there, and you can see them every day when you roll out of bed. They move this market, a market we're all a part of. The amazing thing is that as negative as traders and analysts talk about the power of money people, they are the reason that one individual like me and you can be successful in the market. And actually, this is why it's possible. It wouldn't be possible for someone like me to sit behind my desk at my house and trade and make money if I did not have this, this behind me, the, this just there in the market for me to trade with. And this is why you can do this for a living. This is what creates volatility and momentum in the market as well. In fact, trading the U.S. stock markets is, is such a wonderful thing because you can actually trade with momentum that's going on. I know there are other markets out there. I know that there are. Some are regulated. Some are not regulated. The beautiful thing about the U.S. market is that there is regulation there. There is some regulation there to protect traders. You can, you can trade with leverage, and you also get volatility and momentum. I think the thing is that people just don't pick the right things that are getting the moves. So then they feel frustrated that they're not getting the momentum and then people want to try other trading genres that they feel are more volatile. But that's not the case. They're just missing what stocks to trade to pick that are getting the volatility because there's plenty to look at. And I rarely actually ever play the same stock symbol any day. I usually trade something different every single day. I might do something for a follow through move, but most of the times I'm doing a different stock pick every day. And actually you can see the market in the last few days, it's shown a lot of volatility momentum in the US stock markets. So let's talk a little bit about gaps, my favorite thing in the world. 
Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. They happen every day. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps, and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you denote what to do and also when a change is occurring so you can determine if it's something you want to do or not. So gaps have to be qualified, okay, because not every single gap in the world can be played. They have to be qualified by using a checklist, and this checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. So you go through the checklist, and you write it down. And I actually do this every morning with my gaps, and this is what I did with Aria this morning. Yes, yes, no, no, do, 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 and I figured out all the levels. And in fact, Aria went to the dream target. $4 was the dream target for that today. So it's about focusing on the right information and knowing what to look for. The most valuable information for people to trade can be found in reading price action in gaps. And that's really how I trade. I'm actually an old fashioned trader, even though I'm a young woman. I trade really uh, based on price. I trade price action. If someone took away all my charts and I had absolutely no charts and I had to read the tape, I trade and make money. And I think very few people out there that exist and trade in this world can do that. I am focusing on the price, the price, the price, the price, and that's how I'm able to have a high level of accuracy. Understanding chart reading of gaps and how important the patterns of price are in the market will assist you in becoming profitable. And reading power money when it sets up will help give you conviction to trade, and you do need this. There's no getting away the point that when you decide to trade part-time for a living, as a side thing, whatever, you are risking your own money. You are doing that. You have to bankroll yourself to do it or someone else, and you're still risking your own money to do this, and therefore, you have to have conviction. Conviction means what to me? It means I believe and have 100% conviction that this trade that I'm taking this morning on ARIA is going to work. Now, could it have failed? Well, it might have, and I might have taken a stop. It didn't, but I go into the trade willingly, wanting to, having the conviction, knowing that the trade may not work, but I have the conviction to take it, and I want to take the risk. There's so many people out there that want to trade, but they are so afraid of taking risk. And you won't be successful in the market unless you are willing, willing to take risk. People that are willing to take risk in the market will be rewarded. They will be rewarded beyond their dreams. And this is why the people say, well, why do so many people not make it? Because so many people have a problem taking risk. If you're willing to take the risk and learn something good, you'll make it. You've got to be willing to take the risk and you got to have conviction in something that works and it obviously has to still work, but you have to find that thing that you can sink your teeth into. And I've done that with gaps and I have such a high conviction of gaps. And this is what I'm teaching people, how important it is to have this. And even if a trade sets up and goes on to work, if you don't take it because you didn't have conviction, you'll learn something from that. Vice versa, if you take something and it doesn't and it goes on to not work, you will learn something from that. You've got to get this feeling, it's an emotion, this conviction, believing in yourself and believing in the market. So it's about seeing when and where the power money positions are getting in. And it's just like finding gold to me because seeing gaps clearly and how they are creating trends, changing trends and making momentum is a powerful, powerful way to trade. You can use this information to enter trades yourself so you can get paid along with the power money moves. So you're with these power money people. Here's a great example. This was MW today. I saw this gap this morning. I did not do this because I prefer to go short than longs. However, MW was a bullish gap. This was a fantastic, fabulous, beautiful, perfect bullish gap. And I'm sure a lot of traders who do not understand how to read power money thought this was a fade or something that was going to come in red on the day. Why? Because the night before, MW closed down here, like approximately 35, 25-ish. And then during the earnings gap, it opened up up here around under 44 something. It was like 43.80 something it opened. So that's like almost a $10 gap up. And normal people think, well, gosh, there's no way. There's no way it could possibly go higher. But if you have a way to rate gaps and qualify them, you would know that this is an amazing strength and sign of power. What makes something close the night before here? 
and go up there in the blink of an eye buying, 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 buying. And the interesting thing is that no one forces anyone to buy this. It's, it's doing it itself. The power money people are making it happen. They're creating the gap. They, this is new buying actually that came into the stock. So there's no way it would go red. New buying made this go up $10. It will continue and follow through higher. This is going to break out to all-time highs this year. I think the last high was 55-ish or something. It's going to break over that. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gap and held its strength today despite the market falling in like a tank in the morning. Perfect example of power money and power money people and power buying. And there it is standing tall in the middle of no man's land. People say, well, how can you buy something like this in the middle of nowhere? Just like I short things in the middle of nowhere, like Aria. I, I know how to read what's going on in the price. And it's very simple to me. Again, once you know what to look for. Here's another one. It's almost incredible when you see it. <laughs> this is LRN. This was from today. This came down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 days down in a row, this LRN was. It closed approximately like 28.50. Opened at 21 something. And it gapped down $7 from having run down 21 days in a row. And look at this thing. This is this is institutions selling out of this, and not only that, shorting it too. But it's mostly selling that's going on in here, selling and shorting. It's as everything in this bar here now. But what a beautiful, beautiful example of institutional power. I mean, and how would you know to do this? Would you have got up in the morning and thought this was a buy that it couldn't possibly have gone any further? No. And what happens is. People do try to buy this, traders, not, not institutions who are making the gap. And then they take it and get stopped out and they get stopped out, it creates more red. And they take it again and get stopped out and it creates more red. And then the people that want to sell it and short it or keep selling, selling, selling. And that's what makes a gap like this go and be like a monster. Just from the continuing people trying to say it can't possibly go down anymore. It's almost incredible when you see it. However, once you start to trade gaps, there's nothing that's too incredible. I've seen $20 bars in stocks in a $50 price range. I've seen $6 bars in stocks in a $20 price range. Nothing can go too far, too down too far, or too up too far. There is no such thing as the market. And when something's in a certain trend, it's going to tend to continue rather than reverse. Things tend to continue their trend until they don't. Things want to do what's easiest for them. It is easier for stocks to continue doing what they've been doing rather than not. It, that's why something like this is so, so, so powerful. This is actually what I call a corrective gap. This chart is now in an uptrend, okay? So that's why this kind of thing you, cannot be played against and why it is such a powerful thing that's happening right here today in this because this is brand new buying and is making this trend now to, intact to go higher and it's a new move. And so things will continue down, 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 down or up, 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 up until they stop. And it's so evident when they do to me because I know what to look for. But again, most people think, well, it's impossible for something to go down, you know, 20 some days in a row. No, it's not. This thing wants to keep doing what it feels like doing until it doesn't want to do it anymore. And when it doesn't want to do it anymore, it'll be really obvious. So when you trade on the side of power, you have an edge. It's, it's like the king of the animal kingdom here, this lion. He definitely has an edge. You know, he has a certain place in his society, and he's at the top of the food chain. Uh, no one's more powerful than him. So if you were friends with him, it would be a good thing. You'd want to be his friend. He gives you food sometimes and things like that when you're struggling. You want to be with him. And that's why you want to trade with the power money people. They're not your enemies. They are your friends. You just have to learn how to read them in the market. So let's go over some examples here. This was JCP. This is another just incredible example of institutions just wanting out of this thing. Who knows why? They just want the heck out of it. And uh, it's been running down here for so long. And every time I look at it, you think, well, it's incredible. It can't possibly go any lower. And yet it does. In fact, this day here when it broke, I think it was Friday. I said the target was $8 and it went past that and went to some other number I didn't even have. It went to seven seventy eight, and it's kept going here. But this had a beautiful gap here. And once again, look how many days down. 
And then a gap down here this day, this was back in September, on September 25th. So there was actually a couple different ways you could have done this. So we're going to go over some trade examples here. This is a one minute chart. And again, I trade based on price. So the stock gaps down, you rate it. If it rates over 20 points based on my qualifying 26 point rating system, I'm looking to short it or buy it if it's a bullish gap. Although I prefer to do shorts. And actually, JCP is a great example. And even at LRN today and ARIA, I mean, things tend to want to go quickly, quickly, quickly when they're being sold out. There's no emergency procedure for someone to buy something. That's why also, let me just go back to this. This is going to follow through and break out and make new highs. Because people will go back and say, hmm, maybe we should buy this now. And they'll look at how it held so well here today against the market. And then people will buy it and people will buy it. And then they'll think about buying it and then they'll buy it. So it takes longer for things to go higher. It doesn't take that long for things to go down. There's no emergency activity in people to buy something. It's like not an emergency where they have to invest their money. It's an emergency if people are in things long and the stock gap's down and they're, they're underwater. They're either down money or they were up a lot and now they're not up as much. This is an emergency here. That's why this bar looks like this. This is still a fantastic thing, but this is probably going to fall through even tomorrow. Why? Because people are going to say, hmm, and they're going to want to buy it. So it takes longer for buys to follow through than shorts, which is why I prefer to trade shorts. Also, shorts are very misunderstood. Traders don't really understand how they work or how to do them right, uh, but you certainly can, and you can learn how to do it. And actually, I think the fact that I short and do nothing else but that gives me an edge, too, because I'm so, so good at shorting. Anyways, here was JCP. So it opened, this is 9.30, 9.31, drops down into itself, rallies. And here's the entry. Beautiful, fabulous entry in JCP, and here's the trade. 9.39, price to enter is 11.29. Stop is 11.36. The risk is 7 cents. On 7,000 shares, this is an advanced trader risk, is $490. Exit was 10, we'll go back and look at it, it actually went a little past there. And the total profit on this trade is over $9,000. This is what I call a comma day. And if you've never had a comma day as a trader, it's a great thing. And, and as soon as you do, you're going to get excited about your trading. And if you've never had a comma day, it's time to start thinking about doing a strategy that will let you have a comma day. Because these are the days. These are the days that cover your losses. These are the days that cover your commissions. These are the days that cover everything else so you can trade happily and keep your account intact and keep going and pay yourself at the end of the month. So the risk to reward in this is 18.43 times the amount risk made in profit. And, and it happened in a very little time here. So here's the setup. Now, the stop is over here. Now, people say, well, isn't that tight? No, it has to be that way. When you're trading on a one-minute chart, first of all, you absolutely have to know what you're doing. And second of all, the gap has to be intact. And third of all, the stop is tight. Because if for some reason this would fail, then you want out. Then you take the stop, you take the loss. So the stop has to be where it has to be. And here's the move. Drops on down, follows through, tries to get a breath of life and can't. Basis, 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 breaks. This all happens into still a morning reversal time. So from the time this trade set up to here, it's an hour, an hour of your day to be able to make that kind of money. Now, if you're not an advanced trader, you certainly can't risk $500, but you could break that up in half or thirds or quarters. And you're, this is still a huge trade because it's more than a dollar move with a seven cent stop. The payout in gaps for the risk to reward the way that I am qualifying them is huge. Why? Because the things that I'm looking at are telling me if the stock is going to have an entry like this. The rating system itself is telling me if it's going to work what I call smoothly or cleanly or basically stress-free. So let's look at then the second trade. Well, so you could have done JCP here and wrote it to the target. Or you might have missed it. You might have looked at something else. You weren't paying attention. And you said, wait a minute. And you actually got a late trade in this. You decided to do it later. You wanted to wait for confirmation, although the gap was the confirmation. Confirmation time was 10 o'clock. You could have taken even a late entry in this with a good risk reward. Price is 1083. Stop over 1093. This is 10 cents now. This is still an amazing stop. And especially at this time of the day, just right at the cusp. You could have taken 5,000 shares in an advanced trader, and the exit was 10. Same exit. Profit is 4,150. 
and you made 8.3 times the amount risk made in profit. This is still an amazing trade. And this is even a late entry, I mean, for me. But 10 o'clock here, here's the entry. You get in, stop is over here. It drops on down, falls into the reversal time, and the whole number is the target. And by the time this is starting to capitulate here, you can see even from the daily chart, there was nowhere to go but down in this. But you get a bottomy tail through a whole number, boops, and you, you gotta be out. Let's go back and look at that. So, 83 cents. Again, if you didn't wanna risk $500, you could have risked half this, or a third of this, a quarter of this, still have the same risk to reward. It doesn't really matter how much money you risk in the trade. It's the quality of the trade and it's the quality of the gap. The quality of the gap is gonna give you the quality trade. So you find the quality gap first. Then you find the entry. The entry has to have good risk to reward. You have to know where you're going with it. You've got to be looking for at least three to four on the low end or eight to 10 on the high end if the stock goes to the dream target. And you never know if the stock's going to go to the dream target. Although if the gap rate's high, chances are it will. And sometimes you're up so much money in these things, you just let them ride on down and you can keep lowering the stop. But it's not about how much money you risk. It's not even about how much size you take. It's about learning how to rate the gaps and find these power money institutions. The, find what these are making them. Find who's in these. Find the ones that are going to move like this so that you can get a trade in this to have the risk to reward because you got to have momentum for these stuffs to go. And the, the entry is very important where to put the stops so you can size yourself right. And I always tell people this and focus on the gap and the entry. And then as you prove to yourself that you're doing it over and over again, you up your size. And of course, this takes time. And the only difference between a beginner trader and an advanced trader in reference to the amount of money they make is size. The beginner trader should still be doing correct entries. Just because you're new to anything, anything at all, doesn't mean you shouldn't be taking the right entries. You've got to get the entry right. You've got to get the gap right. So let's look at the play three in this. This is one where it actually has the initial move drops on down, and let's just say you have 100% conviction. You had 100% conviction this was going to $10, and at this point now, it starts to base here. You're in your original trade. You haven't taken anything out. It's basing here, and it broke 11. You're like, yes, I know this is going here. You decide to do an add. You actually keep the initial trade. You actually add more to the position, and you have to lower the stop in case it fails and doesn't break any lower. This could have been done here, but it didn't. It set up again. And then what did you do? You took more. So entry time in this third place is a different way to do it with an ad. 939, price of the first trade, you're in this here at 1129. You're risking $490, okay? Then you add here at 10, uh, 83. You actually take double your size and, and you could have done this here. I think 60 million shares traded on that day or something crazy. You could take this position and you're still a dot. So you can add 7,000 shares to this. And this is not a crazy price point stock, by the way, either. This is a very cheap stock. So you can still take a size like this, even with a normal account. The average price now is 1106. The risk is zero. Because if you get stopped out of the trade with a stop now, you are actually going to still make 1820 if it fails. Because the stop's going to go 1093 with a stop is on the new trade. But it's an ad for you now because you didn't take the profit on the first trade. You're still in it. You just added to the position. So because your average price is above the stop, if this fails, you're out. And you're still going to make $1,800. I'll take $1,800. That's good money. So it's worth it to see if it can go. And then the exit is 10 and it does go to the number. And look at the kind of money you can make in one trade. The risk to reward in this with the ad is 30.28 times the amount risk was made in profit, turning $490 into 14840 Now, this is very advanced. To be able to make, to take a train, to be able to do an ad like this and make over $14,000 in one trade with an initial risk of $490, which is actually incredible, is very advanced, but it can be done. It's really about learning how to do entries because the entry is telling you where to do the ad. And again, you have to put the stop at the right place. And in this case, you actually could have taken more. You could have taken more and actually risked still 500 on the original position and taken more than a 7,000 ad, except for the fact that if, if I do an ad lots of times, if I do an ad late, because this is actually late, this is what I would call late ad, but still plenty good enough target left in it, almost a buck. Um, it's nice to get out of it with something if for some reason it fails, to still be positive in the trade.
because at this first place here at 1083, you were up like 50 cents from the 7,000. It was like approximately 3,500 bucks. So you actually gave back some profit if this would have failed, but this is still really good money because you risked 500 and this is still actually almost four. And it's more than three, which is again, the goal in the first place is to make at least three R's. If you make three R's uh, on average, and this is on average as a trader, three R's and there's 20 trading days in a month, that's 60 R's a month. Now, there'll be days you don't trade. There'll be days you don't trade at all, but there'll be many days you make more than three R's. So I tell people on average, your expectation should be on average three R's a day because there'll be some days you won't trade. Some days you'll take a loss and some days you'll have eight, 10 R trades. So this gives you an idea of what to look for. You know, you never know when you get up in the market. You don't know if things are going to go to the dream target, but you have your sights set. You have the gap figured out. You have everything ready. And when it opens and trades and sets up and you take it and you ride the puppy down and you see where it goes. So to be able to do something like this is advanced, but you certainly can get to this point. What is even making something like this? Power money. This thing opened and sold off from the second that it opened. It dropped like a brick. I don't even remember what made this cap. I actually don't even remember. Yeah, I don't think it was an earnings. It wasn't an earnings gap. It just opened and fell. And, and this thing is just disaster all over it. Might have been a pre-announcement or something. I don't even remember. But, you know, it's continued since then. If you look at this overall chart here. Look at this. So even since this, since it broke $10 that day, it's now looming here like $2 under that since then. A beautiful example of the power of the trend, why it's so important to learn to read trends, and why gaps are really telling you what's going on with this. Because if you are a normal person and you look at this after this and after this and after this and after this, you'd still say, I think it's going to rally now and rally back and recover. This is, has to be the low. There's just no way it can go any lower. You'd say to yourself, but no, even after this, it breaks here and this gapped again. This actually gapped again right in here. And it gapped again here and here. It's gapped like three times since the gap, you know? So this is just one of these beautiful moves um, that really just paid and paid and paid and actually has been paying ever since then and long time since before this. But I mean, even in the last three weeks, if you watch JCP, I mean, you could have just shorted every day you rolled out of bed. So the key to sizable trading profits is really being on the side of institutional money and absolutely never against it because this is where people get tripped up. They think what they're doing makes sense. They think it makes sense. It makes sense. They think it makes intellectual sense to not short something that's down 25 bars. Like that makes sense that you would buy something then. But that's not true. People always say, well, where's the bottom? You can't pick bottoms in stocks. It's a dangerous thing to do. You're trading against trends. And the same thing with picking tops. The bottom is zero. The top is endless. So you can't pick it. And when something's at zero or one penny, I'm not shorting it. It's going bankrupt. So it's really about reading who's in control, who's in control of the price, who's in control of the price, who wants this thing badly, who's buying it now, who's selling out and doesn't want it anymore. And you just trade with them. So you've got to learn a way to find gaps that are made by power money. And I teach a class and my class is called the Golden Gap Course. And it's actually this weekend. The Golden Gap Course teaches a one, one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and charts. The course teaches how to read support and resistance to take positions in the right direction. The course teaches a more proficient and advanced way to read charts, focusing on technical analysis and gaps. The course teaches how to get conviction in your trading and the market as a source of wealth by trading with a side of power for consistent profit. And really trading is about income generation. So if you think something works and you're doing it, but you're back and forth and back and forth like a roller coaster, then that's not consistent profit. You've got to be able to generate income over and over and over again. It's great to have big up days. Nobody loves having big up days more than me. But if you have too many big down days or too many down days period in between the big up day, then what's the point? You're not going to make money. You have to have consistency in what you're doing. And even if it's doing something where you're taking three for three hour trades, four hour trades and not holding to dream targets, if you're consistent day after day after day after day, you'll eventually get to the point where you feel you can risk more. Well, you feel like the idea of not doing that is silly because you want to make the money. 
So I use a 26 point checklist and this tells you what to look for if you do the class and it tells me what to look for every day. And even though I've been doing this since the end of 2008, I still get up every single day. I still rate my gaps. I still go through the process. I fill out the sheet. I do the work. As a live trader myself, I have to do the work. I have to stay sharp. There is no, the market is one of these things where it keeps you on your toes. You got to be on your game. That's the great thing about trading gaps though too. They're usually done in the morning. So I don't have to be perfect for eight hours a day. I have to be perfect for half an hour, 15 minutes, five minutes, 10, but I can be, and so can you. You know, our brains are very powerful. I think that many times we do not challenge our brains enough. We do not challenge ourselves enough to go the extra mile, to learn something new, to cross the bridge, to do it. You gotta ask yourself, how badly do you want it? How badly do you wanna make money in the market like this? Do you really want it or do you just so-so want it? Or do you want it? I wanted it, okay? I wanted it and I have it and I'm doing it. So, I mean, the market really takes no prisoners. If you don't want it bad, it ain't going to give it to you. So you really have to want it. So the Golden Gap course is a complete system. It teaches you the 26 points to rate the gap, how to enter the stock, how to exit the stock, how to look at support and resistance, and how to figure out how to read the side of the power of money that's in stocks. So the class is called the Golden Gap course. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free. The class is online, so if you live anywhere in the world, you can do it from your computer. So after you take the class the first time, you can retake it again for free. I, I trade very deliberately. I like this thing. I take the trade. I'm in. The stock goes there. I think that when you trade the market, you have to trade like that. And if you're wishy-washy about the things you're doing or the risk that you're taking, the market almost smells it and it, it screws up your trading. And then something, you kill something, it goes under work, you take too much, you don't take enough, you chase it late. Uh, you know, you have to be deliberate in your trading actions. You have to be prepared. And the gap set up pre-market so you can rate them and figure everything out before they actually open and trade. And then on the day, you look for the entries and you take them and you trade them. So the class is this weekend. It's October 12th and 13th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. If you are interested, the cost is 2,499 US dollars. You can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you would like more information or want to sign up. The deadline is four o'clock on Friday to sign up for this class if you want to do it. Email me and I can send you the packet to sign up. Remember, the future is yours to create. You got to get conviction in your trading. And if you don't have conviction in something you're doing or don't have a strategy at all, then just take a break. Take a step back because you got to learn how to have this. Part of this is your own belief system in yourself. You do have to believe in your own abilities to be successful in this, in this world and not just that in the market. So thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions? Any questions for Melissa? A little bit over there, but <laughs> I just looked at the clock now. You're just going. It's great. You know, when I start talking about gaps, anything's liable to happen. Okay, is there a chat room for course graduates? Alice asked. There is a live trading room. It is designed for people who have taken the class. There is a monthly membership fee to be in that room. You can email me about that. I can send you more information. It is for people who have done the GAP course. But yes, you can join it. It's not required. Uh, it's, it's your option. But if you do want to be in the live trading room after the class, you can join it. And it's $200 a month. And the annual fee is at a discount if you want to join for the whole year, which a lot of people have done. So, you know, once you do the class and you learn everything, it helps as a support system to be in the live room because I'm calling the trains and you're taking them with me if you're in the live room. So it helps you to make money and people have made money back from the class, of course, to the class <laughs> to being in the live room then. So it does help. But, you know, you, it's up to you if you want to be in it or not. Okay. How are you trading this with options? I don't do options. I have had people that have already done the class 
and used this for taking option trades. I personally am not doing it, so I don't want to say from personal experience, but I've had people call me who have done the class and say they've used it. It makes sense, I think, for some stock symbols, but not for others. I do know people that have done option trades in Apple. In fact, I think some people that I know are in it right now because I've been calling Apple lower and it still is lower. And that's another subject I could talk for an hour about is Apple. But I've had people do option trades. They've taken my class, rated the uh, rated the gaps in the stock chart, and then taken options based on the directional move. That's how they're doing it. Okay, I'm not doing that, but I know people who have done that, and I can refer you to people and talk to them to see you know see what they've done. But I know people have called me and said, "Gosh, I did this. You know, this works for this." And except for I'm not doing it. I love what I'm doing. I don't need to do anything else actually. <laughs> Follow up to that one. So are you buying stocks? I actually only like to short. I really called that MW this morning and I didn't buy it. I, I really just love to short. There's something about me that just prefers to do the short side. And I'll say one thing really quickly. I think the reason that I become so successful trading is because number one, I'm only doing one strategy. I'm only focusing on gaps. And number two, I'm only doing them in one direction. Now that doesn't mean you can't do them in both directions. You can learn the class, flip the flip the points directions, do the 26 points, flip the directional bias, and do the longs. That's how I've seen like gaps like MW. But I don't do them. I think the reason I see these nuances in things and why I've gotten so detailed in even my entries and stops and things is because I'm really just focusing so much on one direction. And you could become an expert in whatever you want to do. You could become an expert in bullish gaps. Uh, for me, it's just that I think the reason I've done so well and I'm so focused is because I'm doing it even in one direction. Now, it's not to say I don't make great calls to the upside. I called Facebook, Netflix, a ton of things. But me personally, I just don't do them even though I call them because I do my shorts in the morning. All right. One last question for you, Melissa. Go ahead. Um, what do you look at to determine whether a trend has changed from bearish to bullish and vice versa? The gap. Every single thing that happens in the life of a chart, every decision that could ever be made in the trend or the directional bias is based on the reading the gaps. The gaps could be bullish gaps or they could be bearish gaps, but everything that's there is in the gaps. If you're reading pivots and you think, we don't have time to bring up Apple because I know we're late, but if you think Apple is in it, Amy's going <laughs> to bot me here. If you think Apple is in an uptrend because it's been doing higher highs and higher lows in a pivot formation for the last, you know, couple of weeks. The fact is, no, Apple is still in a downtrend. So the thing is that reading pivots to determine trend change, which many, many, many people do, and actually a full-on technical analysis, because I've read books. I mean, I've read many, many books. This isn't, I, this is, I made this stuff up. I'm telling you that reading pivots is not good enough to determine a trend in something. You got to read the gaps. No one told me that. I figured it out myself. This is why I built a business around this. This is new information. Okay. Just looking at pivots is not enough. And that's how I know Apple is still going to break. So, you know, the thing is that you have to look at the gaps and understand gaps. And once you do, you're going to see things so much clearer. It's like if we took 20,000 people in a room and I put a chart up and I said, tell me what you think's going on in that chart. I bet every single person would write down a different answer. And then I'd say it too. Now, who would be right? Well, the person, after we go back and look in a week or two months or a year, what it would have played out the way they said. Who's going to be able to read that? Someone that can read gaps. And why is it all gap based? Because gaps show what's happening in the price. It is a true reflection of the price that is being made by institutional money. And that's really why you have to learn how to read gaps. All right, and remind us again how to get a hold of you, Melissa. Uh, my email, I don't know if Amy can type it in the room. It's Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, -S -S at thestockswish.com. Here it is again, Melissa at thestockswish.com. And you can feel free to email me there. I'll be around this afternoon. And again, the class is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, October 12th and 13th. Okay, thank you very much, Melissa, for being here again. I really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks, Amy. Thank you, everyone. You're good.